about me I mean most of it is true I'm an asshole I've heard women I'm kind of rude but I ain't that broken I got issues but I've improved really had hope my big heart was bulletproof I was under the impression that people just engineered up Oh. Welcome back. You're still watching Training SA on SABC3. I'm so, so, so excited for our next segment. Thank you, by the way, for all of your tweets and posts and everything else. Now, our legendary guest tonight is an accomplished actress. Um, sorry, I'm just taking my shoes off. Still the bunch. Very hot. It's an accomplished <laughs> actress and businesswoman. Some of you might remember her as Zoe, mm. who was the dedicated teacher on Years or Years or Season 1. Yeah. Sure. Uh, a role for yeah. which she won the Avanti Award. Award for Best Supporting Actress. Sure. Yes. Well, support. Mm. Um, since then, <laughs> she has gone on to star in numerous other productions, such as The Road, mm. Fallen, and Heartlines, just to name a few. But she simply describes herself as an unapologetically African storyteller. Don't you love that, ladies mm. and gentlemen? You're going to love her. Standi <laughs> Wechorok. Yes, Queen. Yes, Queen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, hey, a variety of things. We uh, want to say hey, anything. Hey. We want to do all the things. First of all, you look amazing. Oh, thank you, Mel. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's really good to have you here. Thank you, guys. All right, let's start a little bit at the beginning, right? Um, born? Yeah. KZN. No, born in Ohio. All oh, right. Oh. So, and then yeah. what? Uh, your family originally yeah. comes from KZN. Yeah, okay, so from that's, that's the thing. And then yeah. so uh, you're raised in all of these environments yeah. internationally where the faces reflected to you yeah. aren't the faces that you see when you look at yourself in the mirror. Yeah. So tell me about some of that identity, you know, grappling with, with Ohio. that. Yeah. yeah. No, Ohio, I don't really remember because mm. obviously I came back at three and from there, we lived Guamapumulu, which is northern Guazulu Natal, okay. and then Canada. Canada, okay. yes. Those are the images you're seeing now with my brothers in the oh snow. My God. <laughs> um, so you can imagine it's it's Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Whoa! You hardly see another brown person. Mm. Every time you see them, it's like yeah. <laughs> They're also like hey, bro, I don't know I don't you. Know you. Yeah, I don't know you. <laughs> you know. So yeah, and that's why um, representation was so important at a very young age. Yeah. Mm. As the moment I just saw someone who looked like me, it was literally a big deal. I remember seeing this girl at school. I went to Hazel, De Hazel Dean Republic School, mm. and um, she was like probably four grades ahead of me. But I went up to her, I was like, hey, how are you? Those girls are picking on me. And she's like, so? Go sort them out. I was like, okay. <laughs> so you, you thought know, you'd I found thought an ally. Be on mm. time, like, yeah. sister. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's so interesting. That's so interesting. Yeah. And the story about the, the, the towel, towel around you your know head. That. Because everyone I saw had beautiful long mm. silky hair. Mm. So I would get home, literally put some socks in to... Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the white towel. That has head. no color. Yeah, no, that, <laughs> that has no, no color. color. <laughs> and I'll put a long towel around me and act like Cynthia, my best friend, who had this gorgeous, you know, mm -hmm. um, lo beautiful long hair. And because for the longest time, I wanted to look like everyone mm -hmm. else. And that was the cool thing, to look like everyone else. No mm. one had my hair that was this short that my mom made sure that she cut because she couldn't maintain it mm. in Canada. Yes. There weren't enough products, yes. or if mm. any. So, um, so interesting. But it was interesting yes. that through that, my parents were that voice who kept on trying to reaffirm me. But if, you know, you spend most of your time at school. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So mm. all you hear most of the time is, you know, this. Yeah. How come your skin's like yeah. this? Oh, look at Satandi's hair, wow. skin. You know, so, yeah. Unbelievable. Sure. Yeah. So your evolution <gasps> then into this prolific actress. Oh, um, but then more than an actress, because yeah. you're quite an activist for, you know, heritage, yeah. for culture, and of course, being a businesswoman yeah. as well. So talk to me about that evolution in your life and career. That was organic. Because I think I've literally always been that 
a person, I've always been selling something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On campus, I was that kid <laughs> getting secondhand coats and selling them to the oh, kids wow, from really? Joburg mm -hmm. in Pitamar, because mm. I went to UKZ in Pitamar, it's back. So, and that's my mom, mm. because she was a nurse, and then um, that person for me who would use whatever platform and space that he had in his own studios in Mali to just really try and give beauty to you know, a dire um, condition, whatever yeah. the conditions were of the people there. That's why when you look at all his pictures in terms of what Malik Setibe was doing in his studios, it would be people who, weren't, who, weren't, who didn't really even have money, mm. but they would come in there for just that moment mm. with whether he had a bike or a helmet or whatever. Mm. He would just give you that moment of escapism. You're beautiful. He would celebrate you. So when um, Bali Soga, who's mm. the editor of True Love, asked me to do something for mm. Valentine's Day, mm. I wanted to stay away from the obvious in terms of cherubs. white. Absolutely. Mm. <laughs> cherubs. cherubs. You know, I really wanted to use the, the platform to say kids need to look around them and not go through what we went through mm. of saying, I don't see black love. I don't see black people who love each other. Mm. And I just thought, let me use Malik Setibe in terms of his work um, as a reference and Stunning. then use that as the platform. Studying, Basaka, yeah. you, you said that when you lived in Canada, you yeah. hardly saw faces that yeah. looked like yours. And I also know that when you, you, were, probably, when you were raised in South Africa, yeah. well, as I was raised in South Africa, that yeah. Abandawa Miyama were telling you about how dark you were. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Colorism is very, very close yeah. to your heart. Yeah. What are you doing about this um, issue? I've recently partnered with, boop, we would not mention the company, but um, it's, <laughs> it's, quite a, it's a big brand, yes. right? And for me to partner with them, and I think I'm one of seven of mm. the women that they've approached to, to drive the narrative of black girls and um, representation, mm. black girls in skin, mm. black girls and in yes. hair, mm. black girls in self-esteem, because that's where a lot of society's problems, as we know, stem from those mm. things. Mm. If we don't sort out that foundation, things go wrong. Mm -hmm. mm. If I'm an adult at my age, I still have those issues of, of course. someone saying, yo, mm. oh, no. I, I, I just saw something on Twitter yesterday where this guy said that woman would have looked beautiful. Did you see it? No. Yeah. It's she would have looked beautiful if um, she was just lighter. And the wow. other guy says, what's wrong with her dark skin? Mm. He says, dark skin looks dirty. Whoa. This is 2018, mm. and we're really still saying that. We're and these are black kids. people saying this? Yeah. These and how do people. they expect other races to look Absolutely. at us? Absolutely. Wow. So that's how we're so messed up because of what's happened in the past in all countries. And where did this, the makeup, uh, like yeah. natural, like yeah. natural, but it's like peach. Yeah. In Africa, Neutral. Mm. natural Absolute. is peach. Absolutely. peach. Like, wow. Hmm. So, yeah. not so long ago, you posted something yeah. that sort of speaks along the lines of self-love. Let's have a look at your tweet. Uh. Um, and it reads, some days I think I've got it all figured out. Some days I don't. Uh, I don't know if I'm coming or going, but guess what? It's okay. Mm. Nothing in this life is perfect or perfectly balanced. And then continues yeah. thereafter. So, it's on self-love, yeah. but there are many challenges um, that come along with self-love. I mean, we live in a very bad world oh, yeah. with so many negative things that come yeah. left, right, and center. So how do you get that yeah. to the top of your priority yeah. list um, in <laughs> such a bad world? I love the fact that you said on top of your priority list because it has to be a priority. Mm. Because otherwise, if you're like, that's why they always say on a flight, um, put on the oxygen mask, take care of yourself. The first time I heard that, I was like, how selfish is that? Like, what about my kids? Mm. But honestly, it has to be about you taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing bad about that. Mm. We've, we've been raised so much to feel like there's something wrong with you switching off and just saying, it's about me mm -hmm. and yeah. I need to preserve. And that's why we have so, uh, a lot of people um, committing suicide mm -hmm. because society says, let us just fit into this machinery of being everything for pressure, everyone pressure, else. Pressure, and pressure. next thing, you focus on all about yourself. Mm. So I think it's okay. It's literally okay to say, hey, no one's perfect. Mm. Everyone's going through what they're going through every single day. Yeah. But it's about getting there every day and showing up and doing the best that you can. Mm. That's, that's all we can do. Beautiful. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Listen, I mean, you, you show up, you do the best. Mm. You've just done the most <laughs> with Uncovered, which is a South African yeah. film, action-packed thriller yeah. that we're really looking yeah. forward to. Tell us, it's got top local stars in. Yeah. What are we, as Tina, the yeah. fans, mm. uh, the what family. are we going yeah. to expect? Thriller, mm. which I'm so proud okay. of because Good. I think as you know, South Africans, we hardly go there. Mm. Yes. You know, mm. we love telling stories sometimes that are really not... Um, 
It's just fine. It's just a thriller. It's a well-written script directed by Zugo Nodata and his wife, who is the producer, Utandega. So it's a family-run production called uh, First Chapter Productions. Cool. Mm. It's a beautiful um, um, little movie that we shot in Newcastle. So we were there literally for full four weeks. Oh, wow. We wow. just got back from beautiful that. Beautiful landscape. Fantastic. Yeah. So but that's coming out next year. Okay. Next year. Okay. Yeah. okay, great. Beautiful. Yeah. Looking forward to it. It's Heritage Month. Yes. I'd like to hear your thoughts as a storyteller, as, you know, somebody who really believes in identity and heritage being so important. What are your thoughts in this month? I think we really need to get to a point to, of where we're not just about celebrating the month. And next thing, it's um, we move on. It's October, mm. November. What does it mean to preserve? Right, mm. because I know a lot of people know that I love vintage so much, and uh, because I'm really about that, I'm always saying, guys, this time here is so limited. Who will document that we were here? Yeah. Mm. And especially as Africans, we don't. Even my love of vintage, I struggle. I'm like, what were Zulus wearing in mm. the 1900s? You know, I want to see that. Mm. And we know we were big on on beading, natural, and natural, natural products. And, beautiful things, but we don't have those things documented. Mm -hmm. And every time you want to um, see a lot of things that have to do with African history or fashion or anything, they're like, oh, go to the University of Reading. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They've got mm -hmm. all of it. But that's not in that's Africa. Mm -hmm. Where's our stuff here mm -hmm. that's documented for our kids to say, oh yeah, my parents were wearing this in 1980s, the whole skateboard or the punk culture. Mm -hmm. it, it must just be like the tip. Right. So we need to oh, This is sure it was from the Dutch and we're saying it's ours. Yeah, we thought it's it's ours. Absolutely. Well, well listen, yeah. you've inspired yeah. a lot of thoughts and yeah. I'm sure everybody at home is just so delighted. Thank you very much for thank you. spending some time. Wow, guys, thank you for having me. You're oh, you to be here. It's about time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, everybody, we'll take a quick ad break. This is Training Essay on SABC3. Aina Koras. <laughs>